What is up guys, it is me Nistro here and we are here reviewing a few shop cards that I just wanted to talk about from Action Crisis. They aren't too meta relevant um, and kind of mediocre, well except for Eternal Nightmares, but um, I, I just want to just take a good look at them. Uh, so first up we got ourselves um, Unending Nightmares is what is called in TCG. You can pay a thousand life points to target a face up spell trap card on the field, destroy it, I have this is card once per turn or you can activate this effect of Eternal Nightmares once per chain, now once per turn. So, um, you pay a thousand, destroy face of spell trap card on the field. So this definitely stops um, a lot of strategies because a lot of cards that are like continuous spell trap cards, they can't really, um, they kind of need to stay in the field to resolve their effects. So to have a card that can pop them um, and like stop them in their tracks is, uh, is pretty nice. And uh, it's kind of like a floodgate for spell and trap cards um, because it kind of stops, like, it makes your, like, it checks your opponent because it's like, they, they ask themselves, should I really activate this card? Should I activate this card? And uh, it's really all up to if the user of Unending Nightmares uh, wants to play or pay the life points. So. It's definitely a fair card. It's a thousand. It only targets face up. If it were any card or any spawn trap card, I think it would be a tad bit broken. But it is a continuous trap card itself. Um, it can pop itself if it wants to. Um, I guess which is nice. Um, and it's something that I, I kind of have mixed feelings about because I don't think I will play it myself or not in like the decks I'm using. But I definitely can see why you would play it. Uh, so, uh, we'll have to see how this card does moving forward to really get a real good vision of whether it'll be something, uh, meta relevant continuing on or not, but, um, I definitely do like the effect, um, and it does, it's kind of like a self-sufficient card, like, you, you don't really need anything else to really make it work, it's something you just play, pay a thousand, and then gone. Um, the thing is, is that with, uh, like, I mean, it can stop, it can kind of stop like True Dracos because like of their draconic diagram and their uh, spell and trap cards, continuous spell and trap cards. But um, if you pop one of their back row uh, True Draco cards, then they get to pop a card in your field as well. So just be careful about that. But um, which is why a lot of, I see a lot of people uh, siding in or playing uh, Cosmic Cyclones now because True Dracos um, really do go hard. For <laughs> for popping their own spell and trap cards or sending them to the graveyard at least, so um, just consider that. So uh, destruction swordsman cradle um, or cradle of destruction swordsman. I don't know. It's called in TCG. Um, it'll have a name similar to that. So uh, you send a destruction sword card and a Buster blader monster from your deck to the graveyard, except uh, another copy of itself. Any special in the Buster Dragon from your extra deck or graveyard. Oh, it says or graveyard. That's actually pretty nice. But during the end phase of the next turn, you can banish, um, but destroy it during the end phase of the next turn. So, um, if, so if you activate it and, uh, Buster Dragon is, so you special in Buster Dragon from the extra deck, you, you mill a Destructive Swordman card, which you should mill your sword. Destruction Sword, uh, the, the Sword um, Trap card, the one where you can banish it, a Busted Blader, and the proper materials to special summon the Busted Blader feature from your extra deck. Yeah, that one. Uh, you drop that and a Busted Blader monster, special summon Busted Dragon, and then uh, pretty much for two turns it's on, the, it's on the board. For the rest of this turn and the rest of the next turn. Or the entirety of the next turn. So uh, if you drop the Destruction Sword card, um, I forgot what it's called, uh, Sword of the Destruction Swordsman, I don't know. Um, Memories, I think? I don't know, whatever. Uh, cause if you can, uh, do that, then you can banish, since it's a trap card in the grave, it has a quick effect in Graveyard where you can banish it and the problem is here is summon out Diffusion, and then with Diffusion and Buster Dragon on field, you get the soft lock on board, switch all your opponent's monsters to defense mode. Since they're all treated as dragons, 
Buster Dragon will treat them as all his dragons, and the fusion will stop all of them from activating their effects, and will switch them also to defense mode. And he also gains a thousand for each dragon monster your opponent controls, and in their graveyard. So it's just extra convenient. And uh, if you watch my Yu-Gi-Oh Pro's uh, duels of uh, Buster Blader Eidolon or Buster Blader Invoked, then you, you saw me use this card. Um, I also used uh, Foolish Burial Goods to mill Revival. So if you draw Revival, then you special them Buster Dragon or the Blue Eyes from Grave. But if you mill it, then you could pop. Uh, you can banish it to stop your Buster Dragon from being destroyed. So it's definitely very useful. Um, this card does have a lot of versi versatility in itself. Um, and it's a very nice card. Now the second effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard. And destruction of cards you control cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects um, this turn. You can already activate one of these uh, per turn. So it's, uh, it's kind of 50-50. Um... Actually, it's not even 50-50 because most times you won't have actual Destruction Sword cards on your board because none of your none of the cards you want to leave on board for the turn are Destruction Sword cards except for the level 1 tuner that stops your opponent from special summoning from the extra deck. That's the only one you want to keep on the board um, and that one you want to keep equipped to a Buster Blader monster. So... Um, it's banish effect is real, real situational and not too good. Um, it should have just stopped every Buster Blader and uh, Buster Dragon from being destroyed. But, you know, we can't have it all. But it's still a very nice card. Um, you can play, you can play any number of these. I only played one because the space was tight in my build. But you can definitely play two to three of these. Um, you, don't, you don't really need to activate one because one gets you going. The second one is like maybe... If you need it, but um, I don't think you need to activate three or play three because you can play uh, Buster Whelp and just search this. But if you're playing pure Buster Blader, you're probably gonna have to play three. So next we have Farewell. Um, it's a kind of mediocre card during your opponent's battle phase. Summon a spell card from your hand to the graveyard. In the battle phase, also all face of monsters currently on the field have their effects negated until the end of this turn. So uh, it stops the battle phase. You have to drop a spell, but there are some decks that don't mind that. Like in a deck like Spellbooks, this could kind of work, and it does negate their effects, uh, your opponent's monster effects for the end of the turn. So um, I kind of just uh, wanted to bring this card up because it seemed interesting to me that you could end the battle phase and negate their effects for 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 the turn. But the thing is, is that uh, it's only one turn, and uh, you have to send a spell. So it's kind of like a minus two just to negate just to save you like for one turn so um it's definitely uh it's definitely debatable um i i wouldn't play it but um if you're a beginner and you don't really have that many cards like if you can't access like quakings or any of that um i i do think this is a nice card you can probably play it just one don't play more than one of these <laughs> unless you have a strategy with it but uh yeah, I guess it's alright. Alrighty, then the last card we have to talk about here is Dynamist Howling. When this card is activated, you can place up to two Dynamist Pendulum Monsters from your extra deck, not from your extra deck, from your main deck, into your Pendulum Zones. And if you do, you can now Pendulum Summon Monsters until the end of the next turn, except for Dynamist Monsters. So, it's a continuous trap card that, when activated, you place two, any two Dynamis Pendulum Monsters you want into your Pendulum Zones. So you pretty much set up a scale for a Pendulum Summon off of one card. And um, I think this is what Dynamis needed. It's kind of like their uh, Pendulum Call. Like, you know, Magicians, they have that card where you discard and get any two Magicians you want. Now with this, you can just activate it and get any two Dynamis you want. And, you know, uh, if you know Dynamis, the lower scales... Um, when they're uh, on the scale, they can stop a Dynamis from being destroyed, and the higher scales, they can stop a Dynamis card from being targeted. Any Dynamis card. So the Pendulum Scale, uh, Continuous Spawn Trap Cards, or your monsters. Which is actually very useful because it can negate something like a Twin Twister. So um, it uh, definitely, definitely has a, a bit of versatility. And uh, once returned, if this card is already face up, 
You contribute one Dynamis monster, target one card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. It's any card, too. It's it's like... <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty great um, that you can do that. So, if you don't know how Dynamis work, um, they have the continuous spell card called Dynamis Charge, right? So, when it's activated, it's like a tanky. You have to search a Dynamis. And then, while it's face up on the field, once per turn, the first Dynamis monster that is sent from the field to the extra deck, um, you get to add it back to your hand. Um, so it's definitely very useful. I, I don't, well, I don't know if it has to be the first, but I know you can, like, once per turn, uh, you can, like, if a Dynamis is sent from the field to the extra deck, you can add it back. Uh, so, um, pretty much, uh, both of the effects here kind of synergize with that, uh, quite a bit, because, um, you activate your scales. So let's say, you, you, like, last turn all you did, like, first turn all you did was just activate your charge, uh, set your Howling, and drum summon out a Dynamis monster, right? Uh, their turn, um, you activate your Howling, and you put your scales up, and you have your charge. If they try to Twin Twister you, uh, use the high scale to negate the Twin Twister, and then J Dynamis Charge activates, and you get to add back that Pendulum monster. Um, and then, as their turn continues, you can use Howling's uh, second effect, that once per turn, you can tribute that Dynamis monster you currently have in your field uh, to send back a card uh, to their hand. And this can be during the end phase after they set a few cards, or it can be if they try to go into a monster or something. So it's definitely a real helpful. So I, I do think Dynamis are going to be trap heavy from this point forward. I, I think they already were, but I think uh, with the addition of Howling, uh, trap heavy dynamis are definitely going to be something you're going to see quite a bit more often. Um, it's a real budget deck. I mean, <laughs> if it, it, like this this deck is like definition of budget. Everything's common except for Rex, and even then Rex is not hard to get at all. This deck really is a real nice budget deck, and uh, I think a lot of people should try it out or um, at least uh, watch um, my videos of it in the next few days because I am doing deck profile and. Uh, duels of this deck um, So uh, You can definitely try it out for yourself like uh, as I said before um, it's not a very expensive deck. It's pretty budget And uh, I think howling itself is gonna save the deck um, if I'm not mistaken dynamis howling is a common in Maximum crisis it could be a rare But it's definitely not a higher rarity than that. So um, It's uh, gonna be a uh, real easy to get and uh, the deck is pretty fun to play. It's it's kind of like um, we always have protection, like, <laughs> and uh, it's funny the way they work is that they like they always have a way to protect themselves, and even if they don't, they're pendulums, so they just go to the extra deck. So it's not really a big deal. And I think Dynamis is one of those decks that won't really suffer too much from Link format, other than the fact that they're a bit trap heavy. Uh, they don't really pendulum summon that much from the extra deck. Like they do more of just do like maybe one or two monsters at most from the extra deck like uh, most times i beat someone i only had like three monsters on board like you, you never go like crazy off with this deck or at least not in normal builds like usually maybe in like a hybrid build or something but in normal builds you, it's, this deck isn't really like one of those turbo decks this is like one of those, those like control decks where you eventually get control of the board because you have a vast amount of resources or renewable resources so, um, having a card like Howling, where you contribute, send a card back to the hand, and then get your monster back, um, pretty much for free, it's, it's pretty nice. So, uh, I guess that's all for this video, um, this was another episode of Maximum Crisis Dissected, episode 4, um, next we're gonna be doing To Do, so, uh, look out for that. And uh, look out for my Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duels and deck profile of Dynamis that I am doing this week. Uh, so, this was Nistro here. I will see you guys later. Peace.